Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sears McGee. I have the honor of being Vice President of the UCSB History Associates uh, and the pleasure of welcoming you, welcoming you to the best day of our year. Unfortunately, our President, uh, Mary Stanley, uh, can't be with us, uh, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll, so I'm sitting in for her. Uh, as many of you know, the History Associates uh, was a, is a community support group. It was established in 1988 by our founding president, the late Dick Cook. Uh, and there's Mary, that's right. And uh, uh, our founding president, the late Dick Cook. Uh, Cook was an advertising executive for the Hearst newspapers and TV Guide, who fortunately for us, chose Santa Barbara as the place where he would retire. He began to attend history lecture courses and enjoyed chatting with the undergraduates after classes ended. He envisioned two roles for the History Associates. The first was to provide opportunities for members of the Santa Barbara community to enjoy a series of talks and other events that featured UCSB's outstanding history faculty. The second, he wanted to raise money to support students in pursuit of their undergraduate and graduate history degrees. For more than three decades, the History Associates have remained true to this vision. Normally, we sponsor five or six events that range widely over time and place, although, of course, the pandemic has required cancellation of our spring events this year. I said today was our finest day. That's because of Dick's second goal, to support undergraduate and graduate students in history at UCSB. Every year we raise funds, and today is the day we have the pleasure of handing out the fruits of our efforts to outstanding history students. Since we began, the History Associates have raised more than half a million dollars uh, in support of the history program at UCSB. We know that our efforts contributed to the high rank accorded to UCSB's History Department graduate program by the National Research Council in 2010. We were the only history department of any public university in the nation to be ranked in the top 10 in the research category. This merely confirms what the History Associates have known all along. UCSB has a great history department. More recent evidence comes from the astonishing record our graduate students have achieved in recent years of winning major external awards, such as Fulbright and Mellon Fellowships for their dissertation research. Graduate Dean Carol Gennetti is not with us this afternoon, but I nevertheless want to thank her for the Graduate Division's constant support for our efforts. Our funding this year, once again, includes a very welcome $10,000 grant from the Grad Division. The format for today's ceremony has three parts, because there are three kinds of awards to be given. I will present the awards that are given by the History Associates, and then I'll turn over the virtual podium to the Chair of the History Department, Professor Erica Rappaport, who will present the History Department's awards. She will then introduce Samantha Putnam, Associate Director of the UCSB Alumni Association, who will introduce the recipient of this year's A. Russell Buchanan Award to our outstanding senior, Gabby Barrow. Typically, the winner would give a talk on uh, her research, but this year, Gabby will record her talk and we'll post it on the department's webpage uh, and social media. Although our primary focus is on graduate education, the History Associates also like to support the stars of tomorrow in UCSB's undergraduate history program. The Bernath Prize honors the memory of Stuart L. Bernath, who died in 1970. Stuart was both an undergraduate and a graduate student in the Department of History. This prize is given to the history undergraduate who has written the best seminar paper in a one-quarter course. In any given year, roughly 100 such papers are written, so the best one has to be extraordinary. This year's Bernath Prize goes to Jody Chen. Her paper was written in Sarah Case's research seminar on women's history and is titled Painting the Broken Blossoms, the Untold Agency of Chinese Women and the Media that Worked to Restrain Them in 1930s San Francisco. In 1998, the History Associates created the History Associates Board Prize, specifically to recognize the best paper in the department's two-quarter senior honors seminar. Uh, the paper, the, the, um, this year, the, the winner was Zheng Chen, uh, who was monitored by Xiao Wei Zheng. The seminar was directed by Miroslav Chavez Garcia, and Chen's title, uh, title of his paper is Local Culture, Identity, and Mobility in Early 19th Century Guangzhou. Every year, about 5,000 students graduate from UCSB. A very small number of these are selected by the UCSB chapter of Phi Beta Kappa to be offered membership in the nation's oldest and most prestigious honor society, founded in 1776. This year, 184 students were selected campus-wide, and 10 of them were history majors. To recognize their accomplishments, we are delighted to give them the money to buy that very special Phi Beta Kappa key. 
and here are their names. Emily Shishima, Veronica Andrada, Michael Kaplan, Glenn Chun, Aubrey Cox, Jacob Hoffman, Grace Levine, Zach Norlin, Roy Van, M Van Miltenberg, and Jung, Jung Chen. In 2014, the UCSB Phi Beta Capture Phi Beta Capture created the Hal Drake Honor Key in honor to honor in order to honor uh, Emeritus History Professor Hal Drake for his more than 40 years of service to the chapter. It is awarded each year to the highest achieving history or history of public policy major selected for admission, with preference to students who successfully completed the Departmental Senior Honor Seminar. This year's uh, Honor Key recipient is Aubrey Cox. The History Associates have a very special award which is given in memory of our founding president, the Dick Cook Memorial Fellowship. It's bestowed on students who, in addition to their outstanding academic records, make the extra effort to contribute to the department, the needs of their fellow students, and offer the entire, often the entire UCSB community. This year we have two Cook Fellows, an undergraduate, Veronica Andrada, who, whose imaginative, enthusiastic, energetic, and highly successful leadership in reviving the Undergraduate History Club, and also serving as an extraordinary departmental peer advisor. Our graduate Cook Fellow is Yu Liu, whose early warning of the COVID-19 threat and hard work to raise funds to combat it at UCSB and in the wider Santa Barbara community has been extremely important and effective. Yu's research in, into the constitution-making process in China from the late 1970s to, to 1947 is directed by Xiao Wei Zhang. The Wilbur Jacobs Prize recognizes the under, outstanding undergraduate stu, uh, graduate student uh, in the early in early American history, in memory of a founding member of this department, this year's winner is Rana Razak, and Rana's mentors are Paul Spicker and James Brooks. Her dissertation tells the intricate and varied stories of Arab immigrants to the American West from 1527 to 1973. A very ambitious dissertation. Next, we have the William H. Ellison Prize. It was awarded. Uh, in memory of William H. Ellison, Professor of History from 1925 to 1948, it recognizes the best graduate seminar paper. This year, the award goes to Nick Cohen for a paper which explores the relationship between U.S. banking, global financial debt, and the growing fragility and inequality inherent in the U.S. economy. Like so many new historians of financial capitalism, Nick takes what was once a forbiddingly technical subject and demonstrates the way that cultural, social, and ideological constructs and tropes frame the way that problems were defined and solutions explored. Nelson Lichtenstein supervises Nick's research. The Stephen Hay Award honors the memory of Professor Stephen Hay, who died in 2001. For several years, he funded an annual grant to the department to support graduate study of Islamic thought and culture. A Gandhi scholar, Hay was deeply committed to promoting the kind of mutual understanding and tolerance that would prevent tragic tragedies, tragedies like Gandhi's assassination. Our winner is Shireen Saikali student, Joke Alshev. Her research addresses an understudied and marginalized group of Yemenis of African origin who are treated as untouchable in Yemen. The Robert L. Kelly Fellowship was created in 1994 to honor another founding member of the History Department. The fellowship recognizes an outstanding graduate student working in one or more of the fields to which Professor Kelly made major contributions. U.S. intellectual history, public history, or the history of public policy. This year, the fellowship goes to Nora Kastner. Nora's dissertation, supervised by Alice O'Connor, is titled Fostering Queer Family, Queer Foster Parents, Their Children, and the Remaking of the American Family, 1971 to 1990. Since 1990, the History Associates Board has funded a special scholarship to recognize our cherished, cherished angel, Joe Beth Van Gelderen, who served on the History Associates Board for many, many years, and, so, and uh, this uh, award was, to, was for students who, like Joe Beth herself, returned to graduate study in history after pursuing family or other interests. In 2006, at her behest, it was renamed in honor of her late husband, Don. For many years, she and Don contributed $10,000 annually for graduate fellowships as a challenge grant around which we built our fundraising campaign with considerable success. This year, the winner of the Donald Van Gelderen Memorial Award is Christopher McMahon. Chris is a U.S. Navy veteran and former officer in the Washoe County Sheriff's Department in Nevada. He has been a superb teaching assistant, 
And as his mentor, James Brooks, told us, Chris's students are perhaps the only UCSB undergraduates who learn how to dance the Virginia Reel. His dissertation research will present an environmental history of what would ultimately become the state of Nevada in 1864, beginning with Mormon colonization after 1850 and extending up to the landmark boom years of the 1870s. We now turn to a group of students who are receiving our History Associates Graduate Fellowships. These grants will be used for a wide variety of purposes, such as travel to do archival research or to give papers at scholarly conferences. This year, we are providing fellowships to 16 graduate students uh, as part of this group. First up, we have uh, Deborah Blumenthal students, uh, Allison Bacchino. Allison is, uh, is heading to uh, several important ar municipal archives in the Spanish province, formerly Kingdom of Aragon, for her dissertation on Jewish charitable practices in the 14th and 15th, 15th centuries. Justin Divries, whose work is su supervised by uh, Beth Digasser, suffered a severe concussion that slowed his progress and a costly, as well as a costly computer failure during the last year. His, his dissertation explores the religious transformation of the city of Thessaloniki in late antiquity with particular attention to the city's Jewish and Christian legacy. And this fellowship will help him get back on track. Amy Fallis, mentored by Shireen Saikali, is studying the politics of charity in Egypt from 1881 to 1939 by investigating the commonalities and shared agendas of reforming elites in colonial Egypt. Her work is revealing the gendered and classed power of prominent elite, elite women who worked for social and moral reform in that period. Julia Giamboni is inquiring into, the, into charitable bequests of textiles by medieval women in the city of Zadar in Croatia and showing that their gifts were a means for asserting their gender, spiritual intentions, and a place, place in a church which was dominated by men. Sharon Farmer is directing Julia's research. Julia jo Julie Johnson <clears throat> uh, has a dissertation in progress called Commodifying Contraception, a Political Economy of Sex in Interwar Britain. Supervised by Erica Rappaport, it examines the social life of the surgical cap con contraceptive device as a commodity tracing its movement and meanings through the work of Marie Stopes throughout the British Empire between 1918 and 1939. Julie flew to London to do archival work on May 13th, planning to be there for six months. But the pandemic forced her to fly back on May 15th and cost her over $1,600 in airline fares and other expenses that are basically lost. This award will help her reschedule her trip when the situation permits. Neil Johnson, mentored by Nelson Lichtenstein, is writing a dissertation on labor market liberalism, manpower policy, and the origins of job training in the United States, 1939 to 1982. This fellowship will enable him to make a trip to Columbia University archives in New York that hold the papers of Eli Ginsburg, an important advisor on manpower issues uh, to the administrations in Washington between the 1950s and 1960s. Raymond Katima's research is focused on the role of music during the Eritrean Ethiopian Revolutionary War, state making, and African liberation struggles. She will present a paper at the annual meeting of the American Anthropological Association meeting in St. Louis in November, and her work is supervised by Mose Chikawero. QZ Lau, mentored by Tony Barbieri, is writing an ambitious dissertation comparing the post imperial phases of the ancient Chinese and Roman cultural spheres. Fluent in Chinese and Japanese, he also reads classical and medieval Latin. This grant will finance a trip to Hungary to study the archaeological remains of the Pannonian period of the Lombards before their migration into Italy. Liu Yu, uh, I've already mentioned her work on constitutionalism in, constitutionalism in China in the modern period. Uh, this fellowship will enable her to spend three months in Taiwan studying in the key archives for her project. David McIntosh, directed by Paul Spickard, is writing on muse museums, monuments, and archives in the southwestern U.S. and northern Mexico, and the way that their racialized public exhibits demonstrate links to the academic discipline of archaeology. Ryan Meyer's dissertation recounts the history of Ghana's cooperatives since the 1930s and their origins in the policies of British colonial authorities in the early 20th century. 
he shows how the cooperatives forged a distinct identity and participated in a transnational network. His work is overseen by Stefan Mischer. Alexandra Nui has Adrian Edgar and Xiaobi Zhang as her mentors. Her dissertation will compare penal systems in China and the former Soviet Union. At the moment, her research is focused on the experiences of the ex-prisoners of the Gulag camps in the Perm region of Russia after they were released and re-entered society. Nikki Renberg, whose work is directed by Peter Alagona, is writing about national and state redwood parks in the context of the environmental history of these parks and how different networks of, of conservation and preservation work together to manage wilderness areas. Elizabeth Schmidt, advised by Erica Rappaport, is working on how British colonists in the 18th century Atlantic world used culinary practices to create new colonial identities and economies in an era of increasing global migrations, trade, collaboration, and conflict. Shane Sprandio's dissertation in medieval Italy by uh, is in, medieval, in medieval Italy is focused on the experiences of immigrants and migrants who came from other Italian regions and settled in Bologna in the 13th and 14th centuries. Uh, his advisor is Carol Lansing. Kristen Thomas McGill is a historian of gender and sexuality in the late Victorian British Empire, who argues that travel, domesticity, consumerism, socialism, and literary artistic movements mediated between the imperial world and a cluster of end-of-century sensibilities. Her mentor is Erica Rappaport. So that's the last of our History Associates graduate fellowships, and we now turn from this large group back to several more specific, specific awards. The Lawrence Badash Prize was created in 2002. Uh, Larry Badash, Professor Emeritus of, of the History of Science, served the university community in the, and historical profession in several capacities for many years. Until his death in 2010, he remained an inveterate worker for peace and weapons control and was the very model of a socially engaged intellectual. This prize recognizes the outstanding graduate student essay on subjects of Larry's areas of scholarship, history of science, technology, or medicine in any era or geographical arena or on weapons control. This year, the winner, winner is Kendra Pilatus, whose research on the politics of the body in Taiwan under Japanese colonial rule with, uh, with a focus on infectious disease management is supervised by Kate McDonald. The paper that won this, this award is An Imperf Imperfect Burial, Disease, Burial Regulations, and Resistance in Japanese-Occupied Taiwan. The Orozco Prize is next. Dr. Monica Orozco, who earned her PhD in Latin American history from UCSB in 1999, is, a director of the Santa, is the director of the Santa Barbara Mission Archive Library uh, and of the Santa Barbara Mission as a whole. She established this award in 2011 to recognize the best paper on a historical subject in Latin American history with a preference for pre-20th century topics produced by a graduate student in history or Latin America and Iberian studies. This year, the winner is Andrena Sotosegura uh, for her paper, quote, From Marinage to, Re to Reducion, Colonial Policies and Local Projects in Early Modern Venezuela. Andrena was nominated for the award by Kate McDonald, and her research is supervised by Evelyn Lolo Pajot. The John Coleman Award goes to the graduate student who wrote the best paper in Cold War history, international history, and or military history. John, a former journalist, served in the military in Vietnam. He traveled widely and came to UCSB to pursue a degree in international relations. John's trademark Hawaiian shirt always made him easy to spot. His fellow graduate students urged the history associates to establish this award after John's untimely death in 2005. This year, the winner of the Coleman Award is Alexandra Nui for her paper titled From Ape to Socialist Man on the Origins of Forced Labor Camps in China. The paper was written for Kate McDonald's seminar and nominated by Adrian Edgar. The Michael Bransfield Prize celebrates, celebrates the best paper or project in public history. It is named after Michael Bransfield, a highly talented member of the one of the department's first classes in public history, who died prematurely in 1983 while completing an internship in Louisiana. Mike's extensive personal library forms the basis of the department's public history book collection. This prize was created by a generous gift from
from my sister Kate, with support from his many friends and colleagues. We have two recipients this year, uh, an undergraduate, Sierra Brown, who's nominated, nominated by Sarah Case, and Anne Plain, uh, 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 by Sarah Case and Anne Plain, and a graduate student, Nikki Renberg, uh, who was nominated by Peter Alagona. The Robert O. Collins Award honors the memory of Professor Robert O. Collins, who died in 2008. It was established the following year with generous donations from Bob's children. He was a world-renowned specialist on the history of the Upper Nile Valley, especially Sudan, and a beloved member of the History Associates Board. He was also the most prolific author in the department's history, writing at least 30 books and countless articles. The obvious way to honor Bob, and one we, one we are certain he would have been pleased by, is to have this award recognize the best first publication by a UCSB history graduate student in any specialty. The Collins Award for 2020 goes to Nicole De Silva for her article on Fashioning Chinese America, Alice Fong Yu and the Trans-Pacific Trans Boycott of Japanese Silk Stockings, 1931 and 1941, published in the Journal of Women's History, a major journal, in the winter of 2019. Nicole's advisor is Lisa Jacobson. Now we turn to the Frank and Amanda Clark Frost Prize for the best seminar paper or dissertation chapter by a graduate student working in the field of political economy. Frank Frost was John Lee's predecessor as our historian of ancient Greece, and his wife, uh, Amanda, earned her PhD in medieval English history. It's the evidence of the depth of Mandy and Frank's concern for the contribution that history can and should make to our public discourse that this prize can go to a student at work in any period, time, or place in the history of any civilization on our planet. The winner this year is Sasha Coles for her paper on the, called The Common Struggle for Refinement, Mormon Women, Railroad Reconstruction, and the Politics of Respectability in Salt Lake City, 1869 to 1877. And she was dominated by her mentor, Lisa Jacobson. In 2005, Darcy Ritzow, the department's longtime graduate program secretary, who has since joined, uh, of course, at our invitation, the uh, History Associates Board, uh, she created the Darcy Ruth Ritzau Graduate Student Award to meet needs she saw in her role as graduate secretary that were not being met by funds from other sources. And we have four recipients this year, Justin Devers, Devers uh, Jana Hyder, Emma John, and Nikki Renberg. Okay, that's it for the History Associates. I'm Erica Rappaport. Um, the chair of the Department of History, and here Sears gave me a podium, so I wanted to actually pretend I was at a podium. Um, I wanted to personally welcome all the students, faculty, staff, family, and friends who are with us today. It's my special privilege to be honoring these students who've contributed so much to making our department a truly welcoming, intellectually stimulating, and engaged community the, with their diverse set of skills, interests, and backgrounds. I want to acknowledge that these amazing students have completed their coursework while dealing with family illness and even death. They have connected with each other while being quarantined, learning online, and confronting a world that unfortunately is rife with racism and violence. I applaud you all. These students and their faculty mentors are truly an inspiration. Before we begin with the History Department Awards, I want to um, add the slide that was missing from Sears' um, presentation. Right at the end, we didn't get this final slide for some reason, I'm not sure why, um, that honors the students that um, we call the Darcy's that received the Darcy Ruth Ritzau Graduate Student Award this year. And as Sears said, there are four students this year, and I have a picture of Darcy there in the center because she really was at the center of creating the kind of graduate program that we have today. So the four students are Justin DeVries, Jenna Hader, Emma John, and Nikki Renberg. So I just wanted to make sure that you got to see their pictures as well. Okay, um, before we begin, also, I really want to thank Sears McGee, who you've just been hearing his voice um, awarding the History Associates Awards. He's, as he mentioned, the Vice President of History Associates, but he is also um, just has been a stalwart um, first faculty member of the department for many years, but also after he's retired, he's still been keeping um, History Associates going, and he helped do the entire script for this award ceremony, and we even 
um, had difficulty. It was hard to figure out how to record the ceremony, and we managed it. So I really want to um, give a shout out to Sears for doing all that work. Um, this award ceremony could not have happened without him. I also want to thank Corey Carpenter, um, our graduate advisor, who also is very instrumental in putting this together and keeping all the records together, helping, of course, helping our undergraduates in um, innumerable ways on all the faculty too. But also, Corey did your program. Um, she helped again uh, make this all happen. So thank you very much, Corey. We really, truly couldn't do this without you. Also, I want to thank Rhiannon Paris, who's our grad advisor, who manages to figure out all these, as you notice, there's a crazy number of awards and funds, names, information, and um, Rhiannon is brilliant at keeping us all straight and not keeping us from making mistakes. So thank you very much, Rhiannon. Um, okay, so then it's my honor to start presenting the History Department Awards. And this first award is very um, special to me. As you might imagine, this is the first year I started this new paper prize, um, which I started in honor of the memory of my mother, Anne Rappaport, who passed away suddenly this past February. Um, the award, I started it and I initially funded it, but others also very quickly contributed to um, help me honor Anne's memory. Um, my mother was an artist whose style and topics were inspired by her love of European culture and art, um, especially that of the 19th and early 20th century. And so it's remarkable then um, that the first paper prize was given to Kristen Thomas McGill for her paper entitled, Even His Lungs Were Affected, Aubrey Beardsley, Earnestness and the Artistic Politics of Interiority. Um, Kristen was... Um, I had nothing to do with Kristen winning this award, and I'm um, I was so surprised to see it. Not be because my mom absolutely loved Aubrey Beardsley, and she would be very, very happy to know that Kristen won this award. Our next award is the History of Public Policy Senior Thesis Prize, and this goes to Shimrem Verma. Her research was directed by Utatya Chattopadhyaya, and the title of her paper is The Myth of Neutrality Implicating the United States in the Violence of 1989 Kashmir Insurgency. The William E. Nita Scholarship is intended to provide a legacy for future generations of history majors by encouraging talented undergraduate students to continue their education. The student must have an interest in U.S. history, high academic achievement, and a desire to pursue a career in teaching. This year's recipient is Mackenzie Butler, who is nominated by Sarah Case. The Amy Talbot Leach Award was created in 2017 in memory of Amy Talbot Leach, class of 1986, whose study of history at UCSB helped shape her understanding of the world in which she lived. The award goes to a history department major or minor who currently receives financial aid to attend UCSB and who has recently completed or is about to complete an unpaid internship in the area of social justice or the award supports a research project related to the history to a history course in the area of social justice. The winner this year is Catalina Vong. Catalina is part of our new minor in the history of poverty, inequality, and social justice. She interned at the National Immigration Forum in Washington, D.C. as part of the UC-DC program. The Marion Ramstead Scholarship in History is, a, is to benefit the education experience of UCSB undergraduates who are especially interested in European or Asian history. Marion Ramstead and her husband Dean were philanthropic former residents of Santa Barbara who are deeply involved with UCSB. This year's Ramstead Scholarship goes to James Ferraro. James was nominated by Paul Spickard, Beth Digazer, Brad Booley, and Ed English. He got four nominations. I just want to read a little um, note from the, one of the nomination letters. Um, James also has been dealing with the fact that se several of his family members have um, caught COVID-19. So he's been dealing with that personal struggle, and yet he's still completing all his work with um, um very high standards. But in the letter, it also wrote that James has native fluency in French and English. He knows German and Latin. He's studying Arabic. 
He's always carrying around four or five books, Medieval European History, Theology, and Social Theory, and he talks with boundless enthusiasm about all of them at once. So congratulations, um, James. It seems like an, a perfect award for you. The Nicholas and Lena Dumas Essay Award is given for the best undergraduate paper on a topic in the history of cult history or culture of the Greek people in ancient and medieval times. It was created by Nicholas and Lena Dumas to honor students in their adopted home of Santa Barbara and to honor their native country. The winning essay this year is by Miguel Sanchez Marquecho um, and was titled Living with the Invader, Forming Sicilian Perspective of Carthage and Rome through, through Diodorus Siculus Bibliotheque. His advisor was John Lee. So each spring, the history and department invites its highest achieving undergraduates at the end of the junior year to apply for places in, two, in a two-quarter senior honors research seminar in which they will produce ambitious papers based on primary research and primary sources. These long papers have been astonishing, astonishingly impressive, and this year's group which was taught by Miroslava Chavez Garcia is no exception. And I also should remark that these students managed to complete their work during the COVID-19 shutdown and being quarantined. Um, there are a remarkable 18 of them, and so I somehow managed to get all their pictures on one slide, or I think it's all the pictures. Let me read their names, um, which is not in the order of the pictures. Um, we have Gabriela Birag, Michael Kaplan, Jean Chen, Lola Colasso, Andrew Del Vasto, Jackie Gerson, Austin Janish, Josh McKenney, um, Kate Mason, Shakina Medea, Elisa, Elisa Otis, Shayel Prasad, Miguel Sanchez Marquecho, Benjamin Schwartz, Madeline Thompson, Thomas Tuszynski, Rowan Van Miltenberg, and Shimran Verma. So congratulations to all of you and to Professor Chavez Garcia. Supervising 18 brilliant students is not an easy feat. And again, congratulations to you. Our next award is the J. Bruce Anderson Memorial Fellowship, which is awarded to an outstanding TA in the Department of History in memory of Bruce Anderson, UCSB graduate student from 1969 to 1976. This year's Anderson Fellowship goes to Sarah Dunn, who was nominated by Alice O'Connor. After describing Sarah's work in the classroom in detail, O'Connor concluded that, quote, what makes Sarah truly stand out can best be conveyed by what her students have to say. Evaluations from Sarah's sections in both courses were unfailingly positive and enthusiastic. In fact, I've never seen such overwhelmingly positive responses. In evaluations for both of these, course, these courses, students who wrote, wrote paragraphs and full pages about what Sarah's instruction had meant to them. Many students thanked her for bringing such infectious passion to the material for creating a stimulating and welcoming environment in her sections, for making sure no one felt marginalized, and for helping them all with one or another skill set. The next award is the Richard K. Mayer Mayberry Award, which goes to PhD students in the Department of History for overall scholarly excellence. This prize is to be used for purchase of books in the student's area of study. Is given in memory of Richard K. Mayberry, who was a UCSB graduate student in 1979 and 80. The winner of this year's award is Nicole da Silva, whose dissertation traces how American women used household consumption as a tool to engage international relations and to work towards international peace from 1914 to 1948. The Esme Frost Fellowship was created by Emeritus Professor Frank Frost in memory of his daughter Esme after her tragic death in an automobile accident. The fellowship supports graduate study towards the PhD degree in the various fields of pre-modern European history, including the ancient Mediterranean, medieval, and early modern periods. This year marks the 32nd anniversary of that award, and its 2020 winner is Lisa Myers Johnson. Her dissertation title is Knowledge Production in and of late antiquity, Euspecius and Caesara Maritima in Pan-Mediterranean Networks. Her mentor is Beth Digazer. The Richard and Jean Williams Endowed Graduate Fellowship is used to recruit and support history graduate students of the highest caliber. Richard Williams is an alumnus of UCSB, and this year's Williams Fellowship goes to Chloe Roberts, advised by Hilary Bernstein. 
Chloe is at work on a comparative trans-European and transatlantic set of case studies of 16th and 17th century lawyers, judges, and demonologists who publish works on conduct trials of witches and other supernatural subjects. She'll be traveling to archives in Paris and Scotland to complete her research, obviously when we're allowed to travel again. The C. Warren Hollister Memorial Fellowship was created in 2002. It honors the memory of a founding member and former chair of the department, Warren, taught at UCSB from 1958 and he retired um, until he retired in 1992. He and Jeff Russell turned US, UCSB into a world-renowned center for the study of medieval European history. This Hollister Fellowship supports graduate students in his field, and this year it goes to Allison Bocchino, whose research on Jewish charity in late medieval Aragon has been described already. Not content with so much else they did for us, Joe Beth and her late husband Don established the Van Gelderen Graduate Fellowship for excellent work in American history with a pre preference for the American West. Our recipient this year is Dana Hughes, whose project contributed to the history of public policy and preservation both in New England and California. And her mentor is Anne Plain. The DeCondi Burns Prize is awarded to the graduate student whose accomplishments in foreign relations are deemed the most outstanding. The preference is for work in US foreign relations. The award was established in 2005 with a gift from Dr. Andrew Ferrand, PhD 1979, to honor Emeritus Professor Alexander de Conde, a former chair of the UCSB History Department, and Professor Richard Burns of Cal State Los Angeles, the two men who, um, according to Dr. Ferrand, taught him to think and analyze and express myself clearly. The recipient this year is Nick Cohen for his paper entitled From Crisis to Consensus, U.S. Commercial Banks, International Debt, and the Making of a Washington Consensus, 1973 to, 17, <laughs> to 1989. It was written for Nelson Lichtenstein Seminar. The Ken Moray and Sarah Norquay Graduate Student Award is made possible by the generous donation of our former chair and colleague Ken Moray and his wife Sarah they returned home to Canada when they left UCSB for the University of Calgary, but Ken was an integral part of his department for nearly 20 years, and we are delighted that he remains, as ever, a generous colleague, even when he is far away. This year it goes to Julie Johnson, whose work on Marie Stopes was described earlier. The Patricia Cohen Endowed Graduate Fellowship was funded by a drive led by Pat's many former students and colleagues after her retirement a few years ago. Her research and teaching in the history of women and gender in the U.S. from 1750 to 1860 is groundbreaking and, groundbreaking and inspiring. This year, the fellowship winner is Elizabeth Schmidt. Lizzie's dissertation on culinary practices and identity formation in the 18th century Atlantic world was mentioned earlier. So the names of those who earned history PhDs in the past year are listed also in your program, and I'd like to read them here and give hearty congratulations to them all. This year we have Keisha Arnold, Doug Jennings, Chi Chi Peng, Joshua Rocha, James White, Marielle Aquino, Chris Nossiger, and Brian Griffith. And I'd also like to invite you all at this time to um, be able to our, attend our history department graduation ceremony, which we're doing virtually and which we'll be honoring these students and all of our wonderful undergraduates who are getting their, um, their BA in history or in double majors or history in uh, public policy and law. Um, and we'll be doing that on Sunday, July 14th, and we'll give you more information about that soon. But we'd like to, we'll be sharing more ab um, about these students and about all of our history students at that time. But I really want to congratulate these. This has um, been a long and difficult process for everybody, and they much deserve their PhDs. I'm now delighted to turn the program over to Samantha Putnam, Director of the UCSB um, I should say, Associate Director of the UCSB Alumni Association, who will introduce this year's recipient of the A. Russell Buchanan Award. Picture of our winner of the Buchanan Award, Gabrielle Birag, whose paper is, um, or thesis was entitled Resolving the Revolving Door, the Legal Systems Efforts in Mitigating the Mental Health Crisis. And again, join me in turning the program over to Samantha Putnam. <laughs> 